Hey everyone, I'm Michael, and this is another episode in my series, A Plant a Week. In this series, I talk about various houseplants. I highlight one for the whole video, talking about how to properly care for it, how to water it, how to propagate it, everything that you need to know to keep your plant healthy and happy. This plant is called Jasmine polyanthum, more commonly known as Jasmine, just like the Disney princess. This blooming plant is normally an outdoors plant, but I guess that could really be said about any plant. It has long vining stems with delicate green leaves that in the winter sprout fragrant white flowers that smell like, well, like Jasmine. <laughs> Typically these plants bloom in the winter and their fragrance is more prominent at night. There's probably some sort of scientific explanation for this, but I don't really know it. <laughs> My jasmine is actually just done blooming. Um, you can see that a lot of the white flowers now have wilted and they're done. So this is what a jasmine looks like when the blooms have died. So you can probably tell that there are some areas of my jasmine that look less than healthy. There are a number of dried leaves. That's because jasmine like to be consistently moist. I've had to water mine multiple times a week which is a pain because I'm also trying to be less generous with my watering for all of my other plants because I have a tendency to overwater things. But this is what happens when you let this plant dry out. And that's totally why I did it. I let it dry out to show you all how it looks if you don't keep the soil moist. Yeah, totally did that on purpose. Jasmine also thrives in a very porous soil. So make sure the soil you're using is full of extra drainage, including perlite, orchid bark, and whatever else you can add. I've yet to repot mine, but it's definitely going to need a new pot in a few months as the roots are starting to snake out of the bottom of the nursery pot it's in. Despite preferring a porous soil, this plant likes to be moist throughout the year, so this is one of those plants you'll want to check on every couple of days. These plants are actually one of the few that can handle direct sunlight, and in the summer months, it does your jasmine really well to have it outside, somewhere where it can get an ample amount of sunlight. In the winter, bring it back inside, as it can't survive colder temperatures that well, and decrease the light slightly, but still give it an ample amount of light. You want to keep it in a window pretty close to a bright light source. As far as fertilizing, normally you want to fertilize in the late winter and early spring. You can use chemical fertilizers, but I've heard that these plants can be a bit temperamental with chemical fertilizers. I tend to use organic fertilizers um, because I have burnt a few plants in the past with chemical ones. If your jasmine is in a rich soil, it may not need to be fertilized at all. A good way to tell if your jasmine needs fertilizing is if its leaves are beginning to turn yellow in the winter or spring, shortly after blooming. This is a sign that it needs a bit of extra nutrients to replenish itself after creating those fragrant blooms. If your plant is growing lush but lacking blooms, try upping the phosphorus in its fertilizer. You can do this by getting chemical fertilizers with higher phosphorus values, or try organic methods like adding crushed up eggshells to the top of the soil. One important thing to do with your jasmine is to trim it. In the early spring, after it blooms, prune your jasmine rather heavily. As they grow out during the growing season, you can let the vines fall or train them up something. As you can see, I have mine wrapped around the sides of this little hanging basket. I kind of really like the look. Now when propagating, you want to take a healthy stem of the plant. Cut about 6 inches from the tip and place that cutting into moist soil. You'll want to keep that cutting in a humid area, whether that's under a cloche or in a terrarium. Cuttings from lateral shoots or branches often root better than the main stem of the plants for some reason. Unfortunately, jasmine are prone to pests, and if you keep them outdoors in the summer, they can become victims to a number of insects and bugs. It can be targeted by caterpillars and aphids, scale and mealybugs, mites and thrips. So you want to keep an eye on your jasmine to make sure it's not harboring a thriving pest colony. Definitely check it before you bring it in for the winter as well. While you might have problems with pests, you won't have problems if one of your pets or children munches on it. Jasmine are classified as a non-toxic plant. Still though, if they eat it, like the whole plant, they might have an upset stomach. Like once I ate a whole package of double stuffed Oreos and even though they're not toxic, I did not feel well. It's kind of the same thing. Jasmine, Oreos, you know, the same thing. If you're looking for a fragrant blooming indoor plant and don't want to wait a few years for a Hoya to bloom, Jasmine is a good go-to addition to your collection. You could literally show it the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. 
Thanks again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for similar content. On Mondays, I post videos about houseplants. And on Fridays, I also post videos about houseplants. And reading, writing, photography, art, and any other generic interests of mine. As always, you can find my social media links in the description below. Also, you can find links to H&H &H Games, the board game company I've helped create, and our debut board game, Season of Heroes. You can also find the Amazon links to my fantasy series, A Chronicle of Crowns. Thanks for watching. Bye!